Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to this rather chilly worship uh, today. It's warm outside, but uh, warm inside, but it's cold outside. At least uh, we are, can, thank, can thank God for the uh, the heating and everything that we've got to keep us away from the, the rather cold that's come upon us. Winter is coming upon us at this time of year, and well, it is what it is. And, Thankful that uh, the cold hasn't prevented anyone from being able to be here with us. I know it can be difficult to get up when it gets into your bones and joints and everything. It kind of makes it a little bit more complicated. Oh, we've got a lot going on. Uh, first of all, if anybody is interested in ordering <coughs> gift cards through Shop with Script, uh, please get with Karen about that. She's going to be making some orders, and if for example, you might want to be giving gift cards for uh, Christmas or anything like that. Uh, you can uh, order gift cards uh, with her, and then that way the church kind of gets the difference in terms of the, the cost, and that kind of uh, helps us out a little bit. So if you're going to be getting gift cards uh, for the holiday season uh, to give to friends and family and whatnot, uh, uh, please get with Karen and, and uh, she'll set you up. Uh, she's going to be ordering some uh, pretty soon, and uh, so that way you can do that. Uh, just a note, uh, you know, we, you look at the banners, and you know the the red banners and stuff are still up, even though it's green. It's like it's got we got two weeks of green. Uh, we had uh, red, then white, then two weeks of green, and it would be white again, and then blue for Advent. And I figured, okay, you know, maybe less wear and tear on the banners, not having to switch them out and all that stuff. No, we're not going to break out into a chorus of Tommy James and the Shondells singing Crimson and Clover. But, uh, you know, I figured it's just easy to leave what we got up now for the two weeks until we switch everything over for Advent anyway. So uh, that's the thinking behind that. There's only so much going up and down on the ladders of human being should have to do. Um, this Wednesday we will have Bible class. The following Wednesday, probably not. I still have not yet figured out. Uh, it'll probably be an evening service for Thanksgiving Eve on Wednesday, but I'm also leaving things sort of open because I do not uh, know exactly what to expect. I'll find out more this coming week. One of the things we're going to do today is pray for the brothers and sisters that our sister congregation, our Redeemer in Florence. Uh, their pastor has been uh, extended a call from a congregation in the St. Louis area. And he's uh, visiting that congregation today to kind of make the final determination of uh, should he choose to uh, accept that call or to decline it. And so as they go through that, that process uh, of uh, deliberation, we'll be praying that the Lord will be with them. And so uh, I'm kind of putting some schedule stuff in advance until I have a firmer idea of how that's all going to shake out. And, you know, I'll probably be putting all of those details into place this week. So we'll know by next Sunday. Anyway, so uh, Bible class this Wednesday, not the following Wednesday because it will be enough of people getting ready for Thanksgiving, but we will have a, a service in place of Bible class that following Wednesday, the time to be determined depending upon how everything shakes out. Next Sunday is the last Sunday of the church year. Uh, and it is also the date of the annual meeting. And so uh, we will be then approving the budget for the following year, uh, electing slave officers to be installed in January, and uh, you know, just kind of getting everybody up to speed on stuff. Uh, first Sunday in Advent is, of course, the Sunday after Thanksgiving. And, uh, oh, by the way, that Tuesday before uh, the uh, Thanksgiving uh, Eve service, so the Tuesday the 22nd, I'll be going to a pastor's conference, so 
uh, I'll be involved with that. There's a lot, just a lot of stuff going on. Uh, got the uh, district board of directors meeting via Zoom on the 2nd of December, and then of course decorating for Christmas on the 3rd. Um, in addition to a fairly packed schedule going on right now, uh, gals are uh, receiving donations uh, in the narthex toward uh, a local food bank so that way you can help a family who might be in need of food this Thanksgiving. Uh, you are uh, encouraged to donate should the Lord lead you to do so. Uh, that's about it for announcements, except that we're also going to be praying for Megan and Jordan, who have uh, got engaged, and we give thanks for the Lord leading them to that point, and so we're going to pray for uh, his blessings upon them. Uh, the sermon text, or the sermon theme for uh, today is, The Field Must Burn. And of course, this is the, you get, you get towards the end of the church year and the texts always point then towards the end of the world type stuff, the uh, final, final days uh, and, you know, kind of like uh, think about uh, where you stand with the Lord as this year comes to a close because, you know, we, we don't have an, un, an unending amount of time here on this earth. And so with the uh, kind of end tiny uh, way of thinking in place, we then begin with our opening hymn, Oh God, Forsake Me Not.
If your Lord kept a record of sins, O oh Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the fellowship of this altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and uh, confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking His grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given His only begotten Son to die for each and every one of you, and for His sake, He forgives you all your sins. And a cold and servant of that same Christ and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, 
says the Lord of hosts. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the statutes and the rules that I commanded him at Horeb for all Israel. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3. Now, we command you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you keep away from any brother who is walking in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us, because we were not idle when you, we were with you, nor did we eat anyone's bread without paying for it, but with toil and labor we worked night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. It was not because we do not have that right, but to give you in ourselves an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we would give you this command. If anyone is not willing to work, let him not eat. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. Now such persons we command and encourage in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. As for you, brothers, do not grow weary in doing good. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Please rise as we sing together the Alleluia in verse. <laughs> surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, and let those who are inside the city depart, 
and let not those who are out in the country enter it. For these are days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant and for those who are nursing infants in those days, for there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among all nations. And Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. And there will be signs and sun and moon and stars and on the earth distress of nations and perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves, people fainting with fear and foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken and then they shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now, when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. <clears throat> Together we confess the Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 206. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven who was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, the title is, The Fields Must Burn. In Bible times, the harvest is now over. People have celebrated living yet another year and hope that their hard work and food supplies will help them through the next, the coming year. But there are no guarantees. Mice, rats, mold, rot, and disease can ruin their food or kill them and their animals. They look forward in cautious hope toward the next uh, planting season, yet they cannot move forward to plant until they set the fields ablaze and burn the stubble. This will kill pests and weeds as well as help to replenish the soil. Without fire, no new life can spring up. Scripture paints a picture of God's wrath as a consuming fire. A grass fire is no joke. It is hot, it is fast, and it can burn your house straight to the ground. Exodus 15, verse 7, speaks of the Lord's anger burning the Egyptians to ash. Isaiah 5, verse 24, describes the fire burning from root to the head of the grain, and we see that also in our Old Testament reading from today. Imagine a crop of wheat so vile with sin that God would rather burn it up than eat it. And of course, the same goes with the sour grapes and the discarded vineyard that we see not only in Isaiah 5, but also Jeremiah 31, verses 29 to 30. Not only are people born into sin, hurtling towards their own death, like a field hurtles towards the fire at the end of the year, but people who live in sin conceive words, deeds, and offspring who are like they are, stubble, 
to be burned. Isaiah chapter 33, verse 11, 40, verse 24, 41, verse 2, and 47, verse 12. Onward through Joel 2, verse 5, Obadiah, verses, uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 18, uh, Nahum, chapter 1, verse 10, and Malachi 4, verse 1, which we encountered. Uh, we see the Lord acting through hostile nations as well as supernatural uh, events to consume both his enemies and his disobedient people. Now, at this point, many a fundamentalist would direct you to get on your knees, approach the mourner's bench, join the altar call, and rededicate your life to the Lord, and it would all be for nothing, because that is not Christianity, that is the religion of the Pharisees. Because there's enough, enough good works that you can do to satisfy God. Jesus says that in Matthew chapter 7, verses 12 to 14. So, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide, and the way is easy that leads to destruction, and those who enter it by are many. For the gate is narrow, and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. Yet a few verses later, in Matthew 7, verses 21 and 23, Jesus tells precisely those who thought that they could work hard enough to earn their salvation, he says to them, I never knew you. There's no way that the stubble, the dry grass, can become green again. There's no way that people dead in sin can become alive again under their own steam, under their own power, and with their own works. We need the grace of Jesus Christ. That's, that's all we have. The world is going to burn like the fields. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5, verses 12 and 13, for what have I to do with judging outsiders? It is not uh, those inside the church whom you are to judge. God judges those outside. Purge the evil person from among you. You see, the Christian church did not turn into the world's hall monitor until it became part of the Roman political world. Before that, Christians made sure that they did the right thing among themselves and that they loved their neighbors even in a hostile world. However, God has already judged the world. The world as we know it around us is headed for the fire. That's going to happen. So, uh, you know, let's look after and start with our homes, ourselves, and our families. And, and we see that in the world. The recent election has changed little to nothing about how the world actually works. Corporations and politicians are still greedy. The elite in both political parties still stare down their noses at uh, Joe and Jane Q. Public. A $16 billion corporation just this past week that traded cryptocurrencies, it evaporated. Uh, and $16 billion became worth $1. And it's amazing how so much could disappear so fast. And this corporation had webs of influence that ranged from the Ukraine to Congress to the highest levels of the US government. Crooks and cronies still use power and money to bully the people while hiding their sins behind virtue signaling that exists on both the left and the right. You see, this world was created by God, yet as John 1, verses 9 to 13 tells us, it did not want to receive Jesus in his time here on earth, and it does not want to receive Jesus 2,000 years later in our time. Yet Jesus still holds out that free gift of new life. What a blessing. We who do not deserve it get it. We who are just as dead in sin as the stubble is dry and dead are given faith by the power of the Holy Spirit to receive Christ, believe in his name, and receive from him the right to become children of God. And these children are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. See also Romans chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, and Romans chapter 9, verse 8. 
Paul writes in Galatians 3, 26 to 27, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Yet Jesus himself does not give this gift to increase sin. In Matthew 3, verse 12, he draws on Isaiah 30, verse 2, to talk about the precious grain that is saved and stored away versus the chaff, which helps to start the burning stubble as if it were kindling. Again, we see Jesus use this image of harvest and burning in Matthew 13 and Luke 3, verse 17. This message was carried onward by Jesus' closest disciples, including John. In 1 John 3, verses 1 through 10, especially verse 8, we read, Whoever makes a practice of sinning is of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. So what can we do? We may try to curb our misdeeds in this broken world, yet we continue to sin each and every day. There is helpful to see another image uh, related to harvest, and this time it's planting. You see, there is harvest, but there is also planting, and both have to do with the fields. And Jesus was burned by the fires of God's wrath on the cross for our sin. He went through that fire. After that, as Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 24, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Before this has meaning for us in terms of a mission contact, those who... Uh, lose their lives for Christ's sake, if you will. It has a meaning because Jesus lost his life for us. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 36 and 37, we read, You foolish person, what you sow now does not come to life unless it dies. And what you sow is not the body that is to be, but a bare kernel, perhaps, of wheat or some other grain. Jesus came through the fire for us. When we have to face the fire, when we have to face our own mortality, we are comforted by 1 John 2, verse 2. He is the propitiation, that is, he suffered in our place for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. In John 14, verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Without Jesus, our world would burn, and we would burn with it forever. Yet, this Jesus is the one way, the one guarantee. Acts chapter 4, verses 11 and 12 reads, this Jesus, the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, who have become, has become this uh, cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. That is how powerful Christ's name is. Selfish people still make money. We cannot change that even after thousands of years. We cannot be the world's hall monitor. What we can do, however, is begin at home and at church. From Paul in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 11 through 17, we read that apart from grace, no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ, our works that are built on that foundation will become manifest, for the day of judgment will disclose it, because it will be revealed by fire. Again, the burning of the field's image. And the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone's built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, 
He will suffer loss, though himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple, and that God's Spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. Woe betide the world that persecutes the church. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. What does that tell us? We who are prone to sin, we who oftentimes resemble the world around us. It tells us that Christ's grace has come to us, and it's given us a new life where we were dead in sin. Christ has given us something that the world cannot give, and now God has declared us to be his holy temple, his people. We are different from the world. We are living. The world is dead. When the fire comes, we shall endure. We shall survive. And we shall have hope. Be at peace even if the world is at war. You are the Lord's temple, precious in his sight. Feed at his table. Learn from his book and walk every day in both fear and in trusting thankfulness, awaiting the life to come. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in one true faith in Christ Jesus. Let's pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all according to their needs. Especially today, we remember those who are to be joined in holy matrimony. Heavenly Father, you establish matrimony and desire that it be kept holy. Behold with your favor, Megan and Jordan, who intend to have their union blessed by your church. Grant them your grace that... Uh, they may begin their wedded life in you according to your word and rejoice in your strong love and enduring blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, especially today we remember our brothers and sisters at our Redeemer and we pray that you give your Holy Spirit to Pastor Chris that he might be able to um, find out what he needs to know in talking with the brothers and sisters in Missouri who have called him to this new opportunity and help make him make the proper decision as to whether to accept the call or uh, to decline it. And we ask that you be with uh, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ at this time and help everyone through this time of deliberation to lead them in a way that you would find to be pleasing in your sight, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We uh, ask your help to be with all of those who are in need of healing, be with those who are in ill health, uh, those who are recovering from various procedures and uh, going through rehab or going through other uh, means to uh, get back to full health, uh, be with those who are wrestling with cancer, those who are living in assisted living facilities and struggling with dementia, those who are uh, dealing with chronic pain, uh, those who are recovering from surgery, uh, be with those who are recovering from traumatic events, whether it be uh, medical in nature or injuries or uh, anything else in their lives. Uh, be with uh, all who are in need of your healing touch and, and your guidance and power. And uh, bless those who are caregivers for all who are in um, in care and, and being given some kind of therapy to, to get better. And we ask you, Lord, if it be your will, to give them relief from their suffering. And if not, Lord, be their companion, even as they might have to deal with the crosses that they bear, knowing that you indeed have made them your temple, that you have given uh, them your decree of holiness, and that you have uh, committed yourself to them uh, throughout their lives and uh, even forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Uh, we ask you to give your divine assistance and protection to everyone who is uh, in a place where they need to put things back together in their lives. Uh, we ask you to be especially with our military during these turbulent times, with our first responders in our tumultuous society, uh, with uh, all medical caregivers, with all of those in serving our government and authority and, and in various positions, and with all who are traveling and uh, 
need your guidance, Lord, send them your Holy Spirit to guide their minds and give them uh, the discernment that only you can give, and also uh, send your holy angels to guide their ways and uh, be uh, looking out for them. We know that you have promised to look out for your people, and we pray that uh, through this, Lord, uh, your promises might be fulfilled. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. And these and all other prayers, Lord, we set them before your throne of grace, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. This time we'll collect the offer. We now sing together the offertory, we give thee but thy heart.
same night when she was betrayed, he took bread. And when he gave him thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Amen. Amen. Lord, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee his peace. Amen. Amen. 